Where are me lucky charms? Where are me lucky charms? Okay. Uh, here's a show that some of you folks may have watched a little bit. Um, the famous iCarly premiered on Nickelodeon September 8th, 2007. And I watched pretty much every episode of this with my daughter, who's now 25 years old. And I really like this show. This show, uh, by the way, where is Gibby? Look him up. <laughs> this show reminds me of, where is Gibby? Of a sitcom, hugely successful sitcom called I Love Lucy, uh, starring Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, who are real husband and wife, and then their best buddies, Fred and Ethel, right behind, who lived in the same apartment building. So this was about friends who lived in the same apartment building. Just like iCarly. And I think iCarly's, the quality of the acting and the writing is right up there with one of the best sitcoms ever made. Still airing in some places called I Love Lucy. And I think iCarly's being revived, isn't it? Except, disappointingly, the great Jeanette McCurdy, who played Carly's friend Sam, seen over there on the right, is evidently not coming back to do the new show. I'm sad to hear that. Uh, and I wish her well wherever she is, because she was a wonderful performer. Here's another children's show that my daughter got me familiar with. She still likes to watch this show at the age of 25. And do we know what show this is, folks? My daughter promised me that this would <laughs> get noticed by you guys. Um, but this is probably something that some of you or many of you actually do watch, is it? Um... This very successful show, based in part on anime, Japanese anime, um, which we have talked about in the past from time to time, has an interesting headline from the New York Times, Avatar The Last Airbender Imagines a World Free of Whiteness. Complex characters, epic narrative, reminder that stories don't always have to be the same white America. So, children's TV, a special segment, I called it before, pod of content that has existed at least since the 50s. Children parked in front of TV sets. Children parked in front of uh, Disney uh, rec Disney movies, you know, by having parents bought the DVDs or the, or whatever the case may be, and, uh, TVs used as babysitters, so to speak, um, right, for decades now. All of us have grown up watching lots and lots of TV, uh, was a wasteland, um, now, at least, there's, and for the last number of years, there's been educational programming. There's more consciousness of what we're showing children, I think. And still a wide range of, of different things geared towards a younger audience on television. Um, so here's where we are, guys. We're well over halfway done. We've got a little more to do, as you can see. Uh, which we will plug on and get to the business. So we're going to talk about ratings. And I've said, and I can't emphasize enough, that um, old-fashioned television, the, before subscription services, 
that are not ad-supported relied on ratings to prove to advertisers that they were delivering audiences. And those networks, those TV stations, were selling their audiences just the way Facebook sells its audience. You're a Facebook user, you're the product. I'm sure you've heard that before. The same goes if you're watching a network. And this company called Nielsen uh, has really had the monopoly on tracking TV ratings. Uh, radio ratings were tracked by a company called Arbitron. And Nielsen bought Arbitron some time ago, so Nielsen controls TV and radio ratings. So for broadcast, Nielsen has been the go-to company to, to see how many people were watching, what were the demographics, what's the income, etc. of people. Um, but right now, uh, Nielsen's in some hot water because table because TV is so much in flux <laughs> um, in terms of viewing habits and when and where and how people are viewing things now that you know Nielsen was set up to give kind of immediate overnight ratings but not everybody it's not appointment based TV anymore right where uh, you know new series were you know shown a week at a time and it was a, you know, every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock was the Mary Tyler Moore show. If you wanted to watch it, that's when you had to watch it. But they ain't like that anymore. So the folks in the business are asking for better measurement of non-linear, non-appointment-based TV viewing. TV revenue, 100% ad-supported. Commercial TV sells its audiences to advertisers, as I said. So how many people watch and who is watching are the most important metrics have been up till the new subscription TV. But by the way, even with subscription TV, the numbers of people watching are kind of important to the companies selling subscriptions. So if nobody's watching, <laughs> then they're not going to have any subscribers. So one way or another, audience having good, attractive programming that gets people to watch and then raising awareness of that programming via advertising is an important part of the business model. So here's an explanation of Nielsen ratings. Okay, Nielsen, what they did is, let's put our statistics hat on now. So hopefully some of you have had or you're going to soon have statistics. Um, Nielsen has to have a sample of households in all the major markets. Um, and those, that sample needs to be projectable to the whole population for the market. And in the old days, Nielsen families were selected to match the average demographics of the area that they were in. And they were paid a little bit to keep a watching a viewing diary in their household. And more recently, Nielsen has meters installed on televisions in the Nielsen household homes. And those automatically gather viewing habits. As you can see, transmit nightly to Nielsen through a home unit connected to a phone line. And then um, on top of that, because the device on the set doesn't know who in the household is watching, um, the families would have to track who was watching what when. And people also have actually both for radio ratings and for TV ratings, they wear devices <laughs> which can record what they are watching automatically. And the people meters mean that you don't have to have the separate diary on top of the set-top box because the people meter says who's watching when. And it does it automatically by picking 
um, codes, etc., off of the programs that are being watched. Nielsen added viewership up to five days after airing in 2016. So, putting our statistics hat back on for a moment, um, this is some of the process for Nielsen families. And they don't get paid very much, <clears throat> but they do get something. And I think it may, the fact that people do it just may be the innate human desire to be important or be thought it was important. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Uh, this is math. Um, this is how ratings are calculated. So, <laughs> rating and share. Okay, I'm not going to go over the math here. You can read it for yourselves. You can pause this for a moment and uh, look at this and try to understand it. Um, basically, um, What happens is that the Nielsen families, you get a measure for how many people out of the Nielsen sample are watching a certain show, and then that sample is projected onto the whole population for that market, that city, that local area. And so they extrapolate or project a total number of viewers based on the sample, and then they can take that total number of viewers and divide it by the total TV watching population in that market to figure out what percent of total TV viewers watched this program. And it just gives a sense for the overall appeal of a program. Here are some actual ratings. Um, published May 5th, 2021. And, um, and here are some things airing uh, on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, the CW Network. And um, there are the ratings in the colored um, cells you think of it like an Excel chart, a rating of 0 0.19, a rating of 0 0.53, a rating of 0 0.82, etc. And they also um, shade the color chart. Above average ratings are in green, average are in yellow, below average are tinted red. Uh, now, I mentioned that ratings are in flux these days, just like TV. Um, another company called Comscore um, is, um, this is announced August 2021, Comscore partnering with Google to measure YouTube. <laughs> okay, so YouTube gets a lot of viewing. And they're doing it without third-party pixels. We haven't talked about pixels, but we will a little more when we talk about Internet. Um, so Comscore is the latest and the greatest company to challenge Nielsen, um, Nielsen's kind of lock on measuring TV ratings. Nielsen sells their services, their rating services, to all the TV channels and networks. You have to subscribe to Nielsen to get these data. They're not free. Um, so Nielsen has a big business selling these data to the networks and to the agencies that buy TV. Um, here's an example of um, Comscore uh, ratings. Um, and this, um, different colored lines are different TV markets. There's a national average, which is dark. Chicago's blue, you know, that certain color of blue, the lighter blue is Dallas-Fort Worth market, etc. And then across, and, and the ratings go up to, it looks like, 60% of households. Um, and then across the 